Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Frank, and today I want to share with you five steps to getting started with 3D printing. I've been 3D printing for a little over two years now with some pretty good results. We just moved back to America after living overseas and all of our stuff is still on a boat in the middle of the Atlantic. So being without my printers for a little bit has reminded me of what it's like getting started and that's exactly what I want to show you guys today. My five steps to getting started with 3D printing. What you're going to need in determining your budget. How to make sure your computer is compatible with the software you're going to need. Deciding what printer is right for you. Where to get 3D files to print and what materials you're going to use to print them with. And finally, my biggest tip for succeeding. Step one, determining what you're gonna to need to start the hobby and establishing a budget. 3D printing at home has become way more affordable over the past couple of years. You can get started for as little as $200 now. Your main expenses for this will be the computer, the software, the 3D printer, the files, and the materials, like the filament. I always recommend when starting a new hobby like this, don't go all out. Keep it basic at first, just get your feet wet. And I just want to let you guys know that any items and resources I mentioned throughout the video are linked down below in the description box for your convenience. Step two, check to make sure your computer is even compatible with the program. I recommend doing this before making the initial investment in your 3D printer. You can download the 3D printing programs for free like Ultimaker Cura or Prusa Slicer. Personally, I've been using Ultimaker Cura for two years now and it's helped me make everything on my channel. Download the programs, grab some 3D files for free, which we'll discuss later, and you can start playing around with it. And if you guys are interested in a more in-depth guide to utilizing that software, I've linked a video up here and down below on exactly how to do that. Hey guys, so I wanna take a little quick break from editing to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and there's always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The fact that Skillshare sponsored this video should be indication enough that the channel and the entire platform is growing, which is amazing. A YouTuber named Thomas Frank offers an entire set of classes about professional mindset increasing your productivity for creatives. This set of courses really helped me out in growing the platform and being more productive when time allots. I have a full-time job and this and a family, so obviously it can get kind of overwhelming and I want to balance that better. And this really stood out to me as something that can definitely help the channel and help me focus more and create. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. So definitely click that link down in the description below, get your free trial, get to learning, and let's get back to the video. Step three, choosing what 3D printer is right for you. There are countless options to choose from when you're looking into your first 3D printer and it can get a little overwhelming, but the main thing you wanna consider is the differences between these two types of printers. Here you have an FDM plastic 3D printer, and over here you have an SLA resin printer. This is probably gonna be the hardest choice you make, and that's determining what do you want to print. Do you wanna print very large props, cosplay, things from around the house, brackets, and stuff like that? You might wanna consider plastic FDM printing. The printers are much bigger, and the cost is a little bit lower. But maybe you wanna print smaller things, little D&D figures, Warhammer, tabletop figures, really detailed prints. SLA or resin printing might be the option for you, but I will warn you, it does have a slightly higher initial investment cost. Now, I know that was a very vague, quick description of how these both operate, but I have been entertaining making a video comparing the two. So if you guys are interested in learning more about how each of these operate and the differences, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Once you've made the choice between FDM or resin, take a look back at your budget and start shopping. I'm gonna cover a few printers across varying budgets and a couple key differences between them. Now remember, these aren't the only printers on the market and there are a lot of options out there. So take your time and do the research. Let's start with FDM printing or plastic. As I mentioned earlier, you can get started for as little as $200. Some examples of this are printers like the Creality Ender 3 and the Voxolab Aquila. You'll notice printers in this price range are smaller, usually have less features and some assembly may be required. But they're some of the best printers for learning the ins and outs of the hop. Now, if your budget's a little higher and you start looking at the mid-range printers, these start to get a little bit bigger. Some examples of this are printers like the Creality CR10 V2 
or the Sobel SVO3. Now, as they start to go up in this size and price range, they'll start obtaining more features to make printing a lot easier. These are the printers I personally like, and I use them to make most of my stuff. Now, let's talk about the high range FDM printers. This is kind of where the FDM printers diverge, where you'll start seeing some really big 3D printers like the CR10 Max, or some much higher quality 3D printers like the Ultimaker series. So when it comes to resin printing, size does matter. What I mean by that is as the size of the printer increases, so does the price. That becomes very apparent when you start looking at the low range printers like the Anycubic Photon, you start moving up to printers like the Elugu Saturn, and then you start looking at the behemoths like the Epax X156. Resin printers typically follow this trend because they don't have all the bells and whistles as FDM printers. They're pretty simple in how they work and they don't really need them. However, when it comes to resin printing, there are more things to look at. While you can get started with FDM with just a printer, some filament, and the software, resin printing does require a little bit more of an initial investment, like a wash station and some way to cure the prints. It also can be a little bit more messy because you're using liquid as opposed to plastic. And it's not typically something I'd recommend for kids without some serious adult supervision. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Frank, where do I get 3D files? What's filament? What's resin? What's the difference? That leads us perfectly into step four. Now, probably one of the biggest common misconceptions about 3D printing is you need to know how to 3D model in order to 3D print. You don't. No, seriously, that's right. I have no idea how to 3D model and I've been making stuff this entire time. Millions, and I mean millions, of 3D files exist on the internet for you to download for free or purchase. Now this is absolutely great if you're just starting with the hobby and learning how to 3D print. You can go to websites like Thingiverse, Thangs.com, My Mini Factory, or Colts 3D and just start downloading files to print. There are other websites and services where you have to pay for 3D files. Now, quality may vary all across the range, but that'll be for you to decide later. For example, I bought the files for my Mark 85 Iron Man suit from DO3D.com, but my Captain America shield was a free file on Thingiverse. However, if you guys wanna go and learn how to start making your own 3D files, you can download programs like Tinkercad or Blender. And now, let's talk about filament and resin. This is another one of those rabbit holes you can dive down with so many different brands, styles, colors, and types. First up, FDM filament. Now, you're gonna go through a lot of this stuff in your trial and error phase, especially when you're first starting out. I recommend PLA plastic for beginners. There's tons of other different types of materials and filaments you can use on FDM printers, but you'll learn that as you go along. And there's some pretty cool stuff out there too. This stuff comes in a variety of colors and different brands, but usually Amazon reviews are pretty good at determining what's good and what's not. So hop on, get some colors, and get printing. Next up is resin for, well, resin printing. Now, I can spend a long time talking about the differences of this stuff, but the main takeaways are the colors, the transparencies, and the strengths. Now, you'll notice a pretty big difference in price between one kilogram of PLA and one kilogram of resin. So the trial and error phase on a resin printer can hurt just a little bit more. But I can promise you, once you figure out how to turn a bottle of this into something like this, it's pretty rewarding. So you've got the budget, you got the printer, the filament, the files, and you're ready to go. That brings us to our final step in this whole journey. Embracing failure. I know it sounds cliche and I really don't wanna say it, but it's true. You're gonna have failed prints. I still have them. I know you guys see the nice finished things, but you're gonna have some mess ups. Every single failure in 3D printing is a learning opportunity. I figured out why this failed. I know why this handle broke. If you just get frustrated and you don't learn from it, you're not gonna grow. Be careful not to compare your progression in the hobby to somebody else. Everybody learns at different rates and everybody prints different things. Slow and steady really wins the race here. You're gonna go through some trials and error and if you're having problems, seek help. The 3D printing community is massive. Between Facebook, Reddit, YouTube tutorials, there's even discords like my own free discord for 3D printing and cosplay to help you out. I really hope you guys found this video helpful. I've been meaning to make a video like this for quite a while now, and during the move, like I said, it really reminded me of what it's like getting started. If you guys get done watching this video and you decide to take the plunge into 3D printing, please leave me a comment down below and let me know what printer you ended up going with. And once again, I really want to thank Skillshare for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. And guys, don't forget, use the link down below. The first thousand people to sign up will get a free trial membership of the Skillshare Premium. If you guys haven't already, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would really help me out. I have so many cool upcoming projects for the channel that I don't want you guys to miss. I cannot wait to share them with you. Thank you for all the support, all the love. Thank you for watching, and you guys have a good day.